careful about how he proceeds. Still looking for the second pickup here. His other opponent gonna be joining. Jumps onto the counter defuse. This is gonna be hard to pull off. His enemy not pushing onto it, but it's Feral that gets the last kill. And Team Secret are your winners of the Allied Esports Rainbow Six Miner. He's gonna move into the angle, but Kingstruck might look the wrong way. Apex, can he deliver the kill? He can! Vitality win ECS Season 7 Finals London 2019. What's up and how's it going, people? Welcome to Esports in 30 FPS Friday Edition. Now, Marissa has abandoned us, thankfully, and went to E3, so I'm here with Zurich. Finally, we get to chill out on the couch. How you doing? I'm pretty good, man. After the Raptors, just <laughs> let's go championship. That's nuts. It's weird. It's like a dream. So you got the energy now. You ready to talk oh, some yeah, FPS? I, I'm so hyped. I'm so hyped. There's, this was just a good week. A good week for FPS, a good week for... Toronto, mm -hmm. you know, and we're here. We're cool. living it right now. We're in here, so let's get into it. Well, Zerk, why don't we get into it? We got two tournaments to talk about today, but we're going to start with Rainbow Six because over in Vegas, the Allied Esports Miner was popping off, and we've got Valley Cardwell calling in in just one second to talk all about it. Until then, roll the frag reel. The top side control has been phenomenal. Oh. Leon turns around into Leech PSK. Able to oh. in. Right, oh. he's gonna be able to walk in right behind him. Able to sneak up a kill on Julio. Oh my god! All of a sudden, NIP is just folded like a lawn chair. All four down! Get it home, but Fultz is getting oh, aggressive no. here. He's gonna take down Moringa. Thinking he's gonna stick this. Ness gonna find Trolla. It's all going down right now. Ness clinks no. yet another. It's Nesk inside of the site! It's the last corner as well. It's another down coming in the oh, interrogation! No. Let's see it! There it goes! And the last player from 92 Dream Team is gonna be revealed. They know exactly where the Doka B is going to be at. Come up just a little bit. Moringa's gonna get the kill on Bosco. This is gonna be the 1v1. It's gonna be all of the boats. And Smokes gets the clutch! The first kill is gonna come to Revan. But Leon, he's gonna go ahead and get the refrag, giving the odds in the diffusers go oh. down already with a minute and 23 seconds left to go. As oh Leon gets yet my. another kill. The F2 is putting in work in. Look at Looking that. for the third. He's unable to get it. And Sir Boss shuts him down, leaving Penta in a 1v3. Rogue's power continues to decrease. An aggressive push from Shuttle. It works out well. He knows the plant's wow. happening too. He's going to be able to pick up two more off of that. 3v2 for NIP. Even do a 2v2. Here we go. The diffuser's down. Down. He's going to have to Oh protect. my. They're, when you talk about cutting yeah. it close. They, they played it perfect, This man. team, he's been clutching it, bring it home. line, no, line goes for the run now. He's gonna get taken out, Rag Group goes down as well, losing one player. Wow, there it is! Left for chaos. Look at the first kill, does get them off the fuser, lines it up, and I believe he's nearly done it. Acid, gonna be very low now, and trying to pull this off with the tie, he can just play to that, oh. no, Acid gets it anyway, Rise, steal the round. Let's try and quickly shut this down. We're gonna see some chase ball, but it's not enough damage, they're not gonna be able to fade! Straight to his left, Ooh. running in with oh that my God. Able to get a double kill. Oh. Bosco taking out Crips. And Red Crew, sweet. Ooh, with a player Jesus. outside the window, he knows it. Got him. He's going to jump in. Bosco's going to get the 3K. Way down, we can see Corey trying to get into position over by Piano. They have the hard ping on to the planter. Are they going to be able to find the kill in time? He gets some. But unfortunately, he's not going to be able to stop the plant from happening. Still managed to get the down, immediately drops on, confirms the kill. He's wedged himself, though, whether he realizes it or not. He's got to be very careful about how he proceeds. Still looking for the second pick up here. So their opponent gonna be joining. Jumps onto the counter defuse. This is gonna be hard to pull off. His enemy not pushing onto it, but it's Feral that gets the last kill. And Team Secret are your winners of the Allied Esports Rainbow Six Miner. It's been a tough 2019 for Team Secret, but I'm sure they're feeling just a little bit better now that they've hoisted that trophy. On the line with us to talk secret and all things from the Allied Esports Miner, we got Veli. What's up, buddy? What's going on, man? It feels great to be here. Thanks thank, for having me on. You no, know, thank you for joining us. Because, it's our pleasure. Uh, th that event was was pretty interesting, you know. But uh, we, you have to start from the top, obviously, yeah. with Team Secret, Secret man. because they just took this entire uh, tournament by storm. Uh, they really needed this win, considering their 2019 showing wasn't really, you know, that good. But a how did? <laughs> yeah, a little disappointing. <laughs> but how did a team come together in this land to take it all? I mean, so pretty much you, you hit the nail on the head. They they were pretty trash coming into this tournament, man. Um, <laughs> no, just playing, but um, they, they've gone through some hardships. It was pretty much growing pain. So you had a player retiring, and they had two new pickups. And then they were relegated outside of Pro League. So the whole team was just looking down. Coming into this event, 
No one really expected them to do as well as they did, but their story was phenomenal. The fact that they were able to go throughout the entire tournament, it was only one map, and that was in the finals, mm -hmm. and winning that, it, it was pretty much like a rebirth story, mm -hmm. and it was beautiful, man. If you ever watch these type of tournaments, you always want to root for the teams with the best stories, and it, it was perfect. Well, can you, can you talk to me about uh, part of that story then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, was, was Farrell, um, who's, uh, I was told recently was an analyst for G2. Can you talk to me about uh, his performance at this event and how he fit in? Farrell was insane. So the star of the team that everybody watches when it comes to kills is Leon. But behind Leon, or right next to Leon, was the newcomer Farrell. And he had so many clutch moments and closed out big rounds. When you look at Siege, is like you can see his personality through his gameplay he mm -hmm. was an opportunist whenever he saw a big opportunity he came in clutched around and went absolutely big for his team so you gotta love pharaoh and him i believe he was a tryout for team secret and after they won this tournament i think he's officially on the team so you'll love to see it now uh, on that note i i I feel like in most esports, generally, you know, the commentators, analysts, and that have a decently high skill level. But I feel mm -hmm. like in R6, it's almost like required. And I feel like most of these, you know, analysts, casters, and everybody can almost jump in and start playing. Is that true? <laughs> so I can't speak on behalf of everyone else that cares <laughs> because I suck and I'm the new guy. <laughs> but um, the one thing that really drew me into Siege is that coaches and people that are really smart at the game they can jump in and be amazing yeah. um, for instance my very first rainbow six event was in december at the u.s nationals in las vegas and evil geniuses the number one team in na one of their players couldn't show up one of their best players yeah. couldn't show up so their coach filled in yeah, and their coach, yeah their coach was like the best player of the entire tournament so that's pretty much the appeal of siege is is less of being just a savage with your gun and more of who's the smartest person on the field at the moment. And mm -hmm. that's why it's appealed to most of the fans that we have today. That, that's cool. I, th I think it's really cool. It's like, um, it also helps the team save money because your coach is also your sub, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's already part of the payroll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of popping off and, and players playing really well, the entire um, Europe pretty much just popped off mm. with Stream and Chaos oh, yeah. had solid showings. Uh, break down EU's strong showing here in Vegas. EU is ridiculous. EU, the competition in, in Europe is just stupid because, okay, you have the number one team, which is G2. They're like... Think of them as the final boss of Rainbow Six, okay. to where they win, they win everything, and it's so annoying. So recently, there was a major, and there was a new team in Europe that was on the rise called Team Empire. They took G2 all the way down the line, they lost in the finals, but they won the very next major, which was the Pro League Finals. Mm -hmm. So coming into this, into this event, you saw a lot of more European teams stepping up. Team Seeker winning, Lestream going off, so it's... Europe is so good at the game, it's actually annoying. I hate them because, I'm, you know, you know the EU and NA rivalry? It's like, yeah. I want NA to be so much better. But Europe, they're, they're just, they're stacked when it comes to death. Everybody's good. So you love to see the competition. Yeah, um, let's talk about actually yeah, NA as well, yeah. now because um, <laughs> no, they were. That. Yeah, yeah, we like, no, no, no. yeah. Well, like, they were kind of a mixed bag, as you as you said. R Rogue and uh, SSG both looked pretty solid in groups, but pretty much yeah. just got too owed in the quarterfinals. And Dark Zero was there, you know. Uh, but <laughs> what, what? They showed up. Yeah, they sh they showed up. They attended the event. But what held the home hometown hopes in uh, Vegas for these uh, NA heroes? That's actually a really good question. Um, we can mark it off to chemistry because Dark Zero, they were one of the top teams in NA, I believe top two in Pro League. They had a new pickup and that guy was statistically the best player in America, but they went one and three. So it's like, okay, is that chemistry? Is it strats? Like, is he not feeding in well? Space Station Gaming went pretty far along with Roll, but they fell short towards the end. But you can't really blame it on them the level of competition and the quality of teams that they played against were actually phenomenal. So you wouldn't call it an upset or really, you know, point the finger at NA and say, ah, you guys suck in America. <laughs> but it was it was more of they ran against good teams and they weren't the better team that day. 
So now that we've we've uh, kind of touched on both regions, I want to see it um, or just ask on their play styles. I mean, in, in a lot of esports, it seems that you know North America is kind of the aggro. Europe's mm -hmm. got a bit more yes. of uh, the smarts behind them. Is that true to this scene as well, or is it just what um, uh, operators that they're they're using that's you know making Europe look so crazy? I like the last part that you used. I would say that the operator use is pretty good for both regions. I feel like Europe does it well because they're more strategic and they're they're a lot laid back. They, they make you come to them and they predict the pace and the play style. Um, in America, we do have a lot more flashy players. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, okay, so talking to the, the OGs and the pros, a lot of people say that Americans play selfish. And okay. I'm not gonna come out and say that because I'm still learning as the new guy. <laughs> but um, I would say that it's, you have kind of like a, a star thing going on in America. You have a few standout players and they're, I don't know, maybe that type of play style isn't coming up well against Europeans. Um, mm. That could be one thing to blame. Um, but the Brazilians, another region we didn't mention, they're extremely aggressive and they fall against the European teams the same way America does. So that. The question you asked is really good, and it's something to really think about for, for you know, the next few days. Yeah. So, yeah. Keep your brains on it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and as we got to see a bunch of teams that recently qualified for the Pro League on land, including uh, Sonics, 92 Dream Team, and Team Vitality, based on their performance at this minor, what can we expect out of them in Season 10 of Pro League? Nothing less than amazingness. Uh, amazingness, okay, if that's even the word. <laughs> I thought you were going to stop at nothing. I'm like, oh. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I was thinking of an, an insane word. That was the first that popped in my head. I don't know why. But um, it was a really good showing. When you saw 92 Dream Team, a lot of people expect them to just come up and get slapped. Mm. But they actually gave good teams, you know, a run for their money. Sonics, unfortunately, didn't have Goddess, who's their anchor and one of my favorite players in the team. So they didn't do too well. But... We've seen them play online, we've seen them play against pro teams. So I would say that Pro League next season should have way more competition than before. So um, judging them off of this last land, I don't think would really be fair. I, I need to see more, I need to see more footage. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, let's move on to Team Liquid, who rose all the way to third place, um, okay. and they kind of needed another positive result. Um, how important do you think was this uh, moving forward for Liquid, considering Moringa just joined in at the end of May? Okay, so Moringa replaced a legendary player in Zig. He was their support player, and I believe he was one of the best support players in the game, if not the game, then the region. So Moringa, he played extremely well, in my opinion. But I would say that this is kind of disappointing for Team Liquid because Team Liquid, they've been at it in a place where, okay, they get third place at one major and then third place at the mine and they're not able to get all the way towards the end to the finals. And so heading into this event, we're expecting Team Liquid to really be the best team here. We expect them to be in the finals. Um, being the last Latin American you know, representative in the semis, they fell short, they fell short. And it was so sad to see. Unfortunately, they lost against the champions but um, Zig, not Zig, excuse me, Nesk and the others, they have such a great showing. I'm, I'm hoping that they can really pick things up because the Latin Americans in this game, they're fiery, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want, I want to talk about meta a bit, just because, like, again, I'm, I'm someone looking from the outside, and it's hard to keep up with, um, with meta of all the esports sometimes, so I want you to kind of uh, teach me here, give me some lessons. So we've been seeing uh, a lot of them, forgive me if I say the name was Cade, Cade? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cade. Uh, yes. and, and Nova as well in the mix. Um, uh, what's your take on the state of the game right now and just uh, the use of these operators? The use of the operators in the meta is extremely in-depth, and the learning curve to get into Rainbow Siege is pretty tough. Mm -hmm. I, for one, I know. <laughs> would know. <laughs> so um, the meta is is pretty intense because you have the band phase, I love it, but each operator cancels out the other, except for a few exceptions. So when you look at Kaid, um, he's a counter for operators such as Thermite, so he protects doors from getting you know knocked down so the attackers will come into the site. Um, so when it comes to meta, it's pretty much the use of the operators and how you present your strategy, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. this, this isn't like Overwatch or Call of Duty where you can jump in the game and be amazing. Mm -hmm. This game is so different yep. because you, you have to play smart. It's a chess game. And then on top of that, your aim has to be absolutely stupid. So um, I would say we don't have enough time to talk about the meta, but if you have a chance, 
to watch the U.S. Nationals or the Pro League and learn a little bit from the pros because it's way different than what you see in ranked. Mm -hmm. It'll teach you so much more. This game is so in-depth. And that's why I love it as a shooter. Now, from from uh, Ubisoft's strategy side, you know, uh, you said it's it's not like uh, Overwatch, but I know Overwatch introduces a lot of uh, heroes to try to help change the meta. Do we see that here too, or do a lot of the operators <clears throat> just get introduced just to counter a specific other operator? Yeah, yeah, you see a lot of okay, so. You see a lot of operators that tries to break the meta, but also we see a lot of operators that mimic old operators, but they're like a 2.0 version. Okay. So <laughs> Kaid is like the Kaid is banded on steroids to where they both can electrocute walls and stop thermite charges from going off, but Kaid could throw them from a distance. So it's kind of like an evolution in operators to further along we go in the game. Mm. And luckily we started a new season where we have two new operators. One operator is on defense, he can see through smoke and flashbangs, which counters a lot of annoying operators like Blitz and Ying. And then you have another operator where cameras can't see her on attack. So the meta is consistently changing and yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, by the way, Mozzie is finally out, and the way he's going to change the meta on defense is going to be amazing because we now have a true slain roamer that can do just about everything. So, um, now, uh, I, I don't know, like, if I'm to jump into this now, like, what are there, are there any, Good like, luck. clear, uh, yeah, yeah, right, right, are there clear, <laughs> any clear OP picks that I should be playing and looking at right now? Because, I, I yes. again, I usually go for aggro, but I think that's just because I'm from North America. No. But I feel like I shouldn't got, be doing that. You gotta be a main nook now in offense, that's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, if you come into the game now, you can't run again. If you run again, you're gonna get destroyed. You're gonna get bodied, like, yeah. every single round. Yeah. Um, a, a few OP ops if you want to get used to the game. I would say Echo on defense. Mm -hmm. He's insane. Echo and Maestro on defense. That way you can play the game at a slower pace, learn how to use your utility and special abilities better. For instance, Echo has these invisible drones that stun people, which is okay. amazing. Um, on offense, if you want to be aggro a little bit, I would say use Ash or Twitch. That'll be right up your okay, alley. Okay, good. I was using Ash when I played, so... To okay. know that I can still do that is good. Yeah, yeah right just straight forward. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm, I'm done grilling him. You can go now, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, let's talk about the miner in, in, in general here because uh, miners like this are very com important for the community, especially for, you know, trying to get into the scene like us here, mm -hmm. you know, and, and like the people who are at the top of the ladder and trying to become uh, a pro in the scene. So talk to us about how important these miners and smaller tournaments are and what is its bigger part in in uh, or what's what does it bring towards the bigger part of the R6 scene? It's pretty simple. Um, back in my day, I was a pro gamer, um, <laughs> and just the um, the grind to get to the top is is extremely hard. It's extremely hard. Uh -huh. So when you have these major events with five hundred thousand dollar prize pool, a million dollar prize pool, and you're not on the pro team, you you kind of want to give up because most of these tournaments are. In, you know, invite only. When you have a ton of miners out there, such as the DreamHacks or the Allied Esports Miner, it allows teams that aren't on that pro level yet to still come in and compete. 92 Dream Team, they weren't in pro league when they were when they were accepted into this tournament. Mm -hmm. So it allows a lot of up and coming teams to really show their worth and really have a chance to go to major tournaments such as the Raleigh USA Major, which is worth $500,000. So I feel like as a game in the community, we, we need more miners. We need to be able to get the unknown faces out there mm -hmm. and make them known because that's how you grow your community. And if you don't do that, then you know what do you have? You have to count on the people that aren't just on a pro level. You have to care about the little guys too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, uh, you, you gotta have that new talent coming in and challenging everyone. Are we still stealing, seeing a lot of that new talent uh, come up and just take the spots of some of the old guard? Yes, Team Empire. They're, they're full of you know a bunch of young <laughs> guys that are just coming into the league and tearing everybody up. Mm -hmm. um, you see a lot of new faces and being one of the new guys as a caster, I came onto the scene along with Spartan, the old Halo, yeah. no, the Halo Pro. I'm not gonna say the old Halo Pro, the Halo Pro. And watching players like him excel and get so good, so damn fast. It's like, oh my God, man. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of new people coming to the scene and this game is blowing up. When you rate this game against other esports titles, this game is always, always, always climbing that ladder. Mm -hmm. So I would say that competition from this point on is just gonna be phenomenal, it's gonna be amazing. And that I wanna see more faces at these miners.
That's awesome. That's that's so, so sick exciting. to hear, man. But Vela, we are out of time. So thank you so much for calling it today and sharing your knowledge with us. Keep killing it on that mic. We'll be talking to you soon. All right. Uh, most definitely. First, if I could say one last thing, Do I, I really want to thank you guys for bringing me in, talking about Rainbow Six Siege, one of my one of my loves. Hearts to you too, man. But um, I want to thank you guys. I love your show. I watch it a lot. I know Marissa's not there, but shout out to Marissa. I miss you. We work together in Toronto. But um, yeah, hope you guys have a good rest of your show, and hopefully, I can see you again soon. Awesome. Bless. We'll just make sure we don't show her that. We can't praise Marissa at all. <laughs> Anyways, don't go anywhere because that wasn't nearly enough FPS action. We're going to chat about the ECS Season 7 Finals in just one second. So while you get ready, why don't you check out these highlights? Extra $300 per kill. That's what he's maybe trying to get. That is uh, an extra smoke grenade or... HE or flashbang, let's see if he can get anything else done here. That's beautiful. It's a one versus two now. Surely not. This, this, there's no way that Keiseratu can turn this into a winnable situation. There's still two players there. Flashbang out. Goes for another peek. Apex turns away. Can't quite find it. There it is. Alex lost that standing. Hey, Keiseratu, would you believe it? Taking down Apex. All of the advantage gone now. It's on Saiwu to try and save it. And he's picked up the one almost chasing Damn. him through the smoke. That would have been it. He's got a minute. He can go a lot of places with this. He could go towards A yes. still. He could pay this out. They're both towards Shaw. Breezy's low as well. And these are the sort of rounds Zywu is a specialist in. Oh, the grenade is beautiful. Oh, he's going to line them up. He's done it. Again. You know there's nothing left. But still, they walk outside. It's so sick. And that's also <laughs> <That's also laughs> What's going on? How is he alive? <laughs> No! It's now down to a three versus two, with the bomb is ticking at some pace now. Flashbang, incredibly useful for them. Zipex, not really in an ideal position. He'll be taken down. The P250 to finish off the job here. Oh my god, through the smoke! Oh, he unscripts at the wrong time. Very frag for Furia. What the hell is going on? Suddenly it's a one versus two for Yuri. He's got a sound QZ. He sees the trajectory. He knows where Gade is roughly one of the two players remaining. He's looking for the frag. They're just charging in one by one. And now it's 1v1. They could play the bomb but they chose to try and play timing instead, and now it's just Gay to try and defend this. Very creepy forwards. Oh, he's nailed it! Now he sees one player towards that position, and AC's going to pick up the gun for Vinny, so North off to a good start. AC, another frag, is looking really difficult here for Furia. AC, he's got himself all five. That is incredible. One of the most overlooked positions in CSGO. We'll see if Dax thinks about it. He does. Should be a trade here for Ethan. Oh my god, how is he getting away with this? Oh, Zywu! He has found three! Make it four! He's waiting for him to emerge from the other side. This is looking pretty grim here. Our oh, force ball is with it. Oh, he hits another one. That is fantastic. Swaps out for the AK-47. We move into the angle, but Case might look the wrong way. Apex, can he deliver the kill? He can! Vitality win ECS Season 7 Finals London 2019. CSGO actually never stops, man, and the ECS Season 7 was no exception. Zurich, we talked a lot of CSGO uh, over the last few weeks, uh, but let's spend a little bit of time now just to, to dive into some of these teams. I want you to uh, start me off with um, Furia, because they're, they're still on a roll right now. Yeah, this team just came out of pretty much nowhere and then just started wrecking just the scene. Why? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> it's just one of those... No, I think their, their gameplay is so just, like, out of... Um, the pace of okay. the of the current CS:GO meta, because like um, Art's gameplay is so different. Like he is very aggressive. He always takes crazy, crazy angles, and yeah. like he put he does pushes that most of the time in like a regular standard professional game doesn't make any sense. Like he is their main opera and their IGL, but he plays so just out of. It's weird. It's I've never seen like sometimes I'm like, what is he doing? And then he just gets three frags because he's so just again so you, out out of this world. Yeah. So usually an IGL is using the other guys as the, his chess pieces. Mm -hmm, do, do you mm -hmm. feel like he's kind of using them as a bodyguard to let him do stuff? N yeah, a little bit. So he there's a lot of gameplay with this team where uh, Art is kind of off in the side, mm -hmm. he's doing something else, like he's usually doing a flank or something like that. But then in this tournament in particular, Kay Serato was also just phenomenal. Yeah. He's played probably the best tournament in his life. There was a crazy pistol balcony shot that just like, what the heck, this guy was <laughs> jumping off and he just flicks and catches the guy's head in midair and he just popped out this entire tournament. So with this guy in the back and then Art just doing Art things, like they just completely took over this tournament. 
completely just annihilated. No. We'll see if they can keep doing that. Another team that's usually been doing good, Astralis, mm -hmm. but they've been slowing down lately. Yeah. And I'm wondering, if, like, what's going on with them right now? Uh, so they've been, they took a little bit of a break. Yeah. They missed a bunch Skipping of... Skipping some tournaments, yeah, yeah. A lot of tournaments. A lot of tournaments. They mainly played in, um, like, BPL and stuff like that, which is a lot, a lot of, um, uh, you know, money. But, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, uh, this is a team that's second in the HLTV rankings. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. with this performance they cannot take on team liquid for that top one mm. spot because you know they, they, they didn't perform that well yeah. but this is still a team that is incredible you know you can't we can't really sleep on Astralis because they're just one of those teams that just when they're on they're on unfortunately in this tournament there wasn't as much cohesion usually Astralis is a very utility heavy team and like a lot of their plays revolve mm -hmm. around a lot of that like oh we're gonna throw a grenade into this one spot because we know exactly that this guy is holding this angle because I don't know they do their research I guess I have no idea yeah, but okay. they're, they're just one of those scenes but that Astralis wasn't here in this tournament unfortunately but you know we can't sleep on them they, they're still a very 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 good team okay another team that you can't uh, sleep on right now because I think Moses has been talking about um, a lot to his uh, complexity mm -hmm. now with uh, OBO or Obo sorry yeah Obo. yeah so so how's he looking now with the team so this guy is 15 years old gets That's signed nuts. into a pro CSGO team the, the game is three years older than he is they are That's weird because like usually you'd think you'd have to be uh, 18 in a, in a game like that right, right? to play it but You're 15, right? That's yeah, 15. Not, you gotta be really good then yeah people are willing no to like <laughs> freakishly good because this barely happens and especially in CSGO where we know that the the barrier of entry is so mm -hmm. high and like any of the pros and most of the pros have been playing for at least 10 years right like this is a scene that is established everybody has been in this for the longest time and then this kid comes out of nowhere and starts fragging and this and as, as, uh, as you said Moses called him a potential yeah, franchise, a franchise player, player yeah. he has so much potential starting as 15 playing against the top competition already imagine that is what can this kid do in I, like three years? I'm just wondering if you know he's gonna if he's gonna fall off. Is it too early to sign someone like that? Yeah, right? but the future is bright. Like this, from this tournament, they seem like they could potentially, you know, like take on the top yeah. teams. But it, only only time will tell. Only this time is the, will tell. This is the honeymoon phase for mm -hmm. the current complexity roster at the moment mm -hmm. with OBO. All right, so now, now we've only got uh, two minutes left, uh, but this is FPS Friday, so we should probably talk about CWL coming up, uh, CW London. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to give us a bit of a preview on what we're expecting to see? Um, so this is a very interesting tournament for Optic because they have to prove themselves worthy of staying as Optic. Mm -hmm. Because as we know, uh, Immortals you know, and, and Optic has uh, combined, so Immortals have MIBR, you can only have one team, mm -hmm. so Optic might... Um, you know, either they have an option in either keeping their CWL team together as Optic, and mm -hmm. the players have to prove that they are worthy of keeping the Optic brand because they are, you know, the top yeah, team for well, the of longest yeah, time, yeah. and it's like a legacy. Yeah. So it's it's really they have to they have to uh, like show up here. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, 100 Thieves is also in the yeah, and and they won the last the last major, so. It's going to be a very interesting mm -hmm. tournament. We have to see, because um, also LG is kind of not in, in the game with Gunless sitting out, and uh, they're, they're, uh, they are playing with the sub at the moment. So we mm -hmm. have to see all these mid-range team, you know, fight for this potential fourth. So and third spot. So at the, sorry, Anaheim, not London, by the way. Um, do you Anaheim. think 100 Thieves can, can defend us? Like, what are, your, what are your, your feeling with them going in? Like, are you confident? Uh, we will see. I really, I can't. I, I, so I really want Optic to win because they are just like yeah, the, you got, I mean like yes. who doesn't right? <laughs> yeah 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 but at the same time 100 Thieves as a, an, an underdog story is also not really underdog because they won the last tournament yeah. so they, this is just a crazy storyline we, we have and to just see it. looking at the fan base in general too mm -hmm. is like I mean 100 Thieves is starting to step up there as one of the fan favorites yeah uh, and potentially sure. maybe overtaking Optic at some point mm -hmm. especially with a potential rebrand in the future yeah yeah it's very interesting so this is definitely a tournament if you are a COD fan this is a tournament that you have to tune into because mm -hmm. 
We don't know what could happen. Everything is up in the air. But I feel like every COD event is always like this. There's so many roster changes yeah, 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 right. every single event. So it's going to be lit. All right. Not I'm putting less. my tablet down because we're out of time right now. That's it, Zerk. Thank you so much for walking me through the world of FPS. And of course, thanks to Veli for calling in. We're, we are done, sorry, for the week. But definitely tune in on Monday for a whole dose of Squad. Till then, check out our socials at Squad State. And we'll see you then.